Hello everybody, I'm Overhaul and today we'll be reviewing all the chapters that were between Dragon and Arf versus Arthur from Fire Force because in the most recent chapter it has finally, the battle has finally ended Hooray! Now before we start let's get the usual disclaimer at the beginning of the videos out of the way I am not a kid specific channel, although the topics I discuss might look like they are for kids. It's very easy for me to eventually end up talking about things that are either not meant for kids, describing things that are meant for kids, or generally just use words that are not meant for kids. So if you're a child, I would advise you not to watch this. As for anyone else, let's get into the video. Now, since this fight took place what was it? Nine chapters? Chapters? Pretty much like an entire volume, let's be real here. I decided to do a little differently. Instead of going what happens in every chapter, I'm just gonna do a roundup about things that have happened during the chapters. Like, we'll be talking about the fight itself, then we'll talk about Arthur, then we're gonna talk about Dragon, and then we'll be talking about all of the little bits that have been around the more final portions of the fight. So with that out of the way, let's get into the fight itself. The fight itself was excellent. The choreography on point, the art in it, I do not think there was a single moment where the art faltered. Faltered. And all in all, it was a pretty good fight. In every regard. In all honesty, I can totally see this fight being top 10 for fire force fights. Can totally see it why it would be a fan favorite. And everyone who's been desperately waiting for their Dragon vs. Arthur rematch since like... I don't know, since like when the final pillar popped out from the ground. I think everyone there got exactly what they delivered. When it comes to the anticipation, because I cannot tell a single problem with the fight itself. I mean, there are problems with the fight itself, which we will get a bit, a little bit later. But isn't it goes along like something you want, like sit down, grab a popcorn, and re and speed read it, spit blitz it. It's a pretty entertaining read, and you will have a lot of fun with it. That, and I cannot wait for this to be animated because, oh boy, it's all gonna be epic. I do wonder if the anime will have problems animating this episode, this fight, because it's so good in the manga, in terms of art style. So, let's see. So I cannot wait to see what's going to happen. Now. Let's go to the problems. As much as this fight, in terms of art and, you know, choreography is amazing, there are a few problems with it. For one, it's fuck, it's long as fuck. Seriously, this fight is like nine, ch nine chapters. And some of these chapters definitely feel like they could be cut. I mean, for I mean, I believe there's like one chapter where it's basically barely any dialogue. Like I think some small word banter, and the only thing that really happens of any significance, like the final cut. This honestly feels more like when an anime has to extend the chapter episode a bit so they add more into the fights than actually need to have it. And there's another chapter where the fight. Where we get get like these three different panels that I believe would be uh, through the entire you know you know when you open a manga and you have like some of those pages that take over both of the pages yeah that's what those two of those feel like you just go like if you this when this is gonna be a volume it would basically be like you open a part and then you see space you go to the next page uh, you turn the page and you have another space you turn the third one and you get another space. And as great great as it looks like, it is, you know, a bit feel like it wastes time a bit. 
I mean, granted, I understand. Maybe Okubo's. I believe there was some statements about Okubo possibly ending his manga career after Fire Force. Like Fire Force is his end. So I do understand why, why he may want to have more pages where he can explore his art because outside of like if he makes um vol those uh, what they're called those picture books where you have art the artists draw the characters and color not he's probably not gonna do much so maybe he just wants to like indulge himself but it is a bit frustrating reading week to week to week with it but to be fair, reading manga week to week to week is always a bit frustrating. Especially when, you know, there's a certain content that you don't really like. Or you have to like, wait. Like, you have to wait an entire week to get basically just a couple of chapters of guys smacking. Which, you know, wrong. Which, granted, it's a pretty good fight. But let's be real here, it is getting a bit annoying. And it's something that you want to just binge through. So, yeah, the fight itself is a pretty good one, a pretty solid one, but it does feel like it was extended a bit. And there were multiple moments where you feel where there was not very much necessary. But overall, fight itself, good. The format and the, uh, yeah, the format itself, a little bit not really good for fit. Now, before we cut from the fight, I do have to mention something funny. And that's the fact that both of these weeks had the main had the villain who we all pretty much assume is going to have to battle this certain hero, being Dragon and Vonica fighting well and Arthur. Both of them had very respectable and dignified defeats, defeats or take their defeats very dignified and very respectively in the same week. Like as soon as like I just find this hilarious. Dragon and Vonica show up. We all knew these are gonna be offers and Wells opponents. We knew this was going to happen. Zabiro were waiting for every the both of them were waiting for weeks for these fights. The choreography, oddly enough, is on point. Fire Force, by the way, had much better choreography than Noel's fight, than Vika vs. Noel's round two. And both of them got defeated with both of them taking their defeats. Really well and respect. I just find that hilarious that I was like, I know it was a coincidence, but it's just hilarious to think about it. Now let's get to our first point in this fight. Arthur in these last these chapters doesn't really like do much in terms of character. Like there's not much character development. I mean there's cool scenes, no doubt. No. Like the kind of fucking well. Having his heart be so wide that it not only kills kills Dragon, but also cuts, seemingly cuts the planet in half. It doesn't happen, and I believe it was just said to be hope. But just how that sheer design of it looks amazing. So yeah, although there are a lot of awesome panels like that, and Alpha definitely deserved this W, and you can totally see that this was like one top tier battle. Alpha's character doesn't exactly develop or anything, like, th we, this is sh more just shows us how willing Arthur is, shows us how determined he is, how, shows us how night kingly he is to save the planet, uh, free Dragon of his despair, and inspire, and, you know, finish his quest, basically. So, again, there's nothing much to say, and... It's only really the end of the battle where it you really start to like get more like personal emotional with him when he's like, "I promise I'll return. I promised I will save you. I promise I'll vanquish you, and I promised that I will save Shin. That I'll that I'll save Shinra." So there's a pretty these are pretty good characters ish moments and pretty solid. I like them in general. They're pretty solid ge in general moments and actions by Arthur. And his determination is shown. Shown. And honestly, I'm not sure what's going to happen to him now. Because the end of the fight is him literally being cut in half. 
half one of his hands gone and his and him dropping his sword. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen next. I'm guessing Shayla will come and save him since Shayla did just break out and Alpha is probably gonna start falling. And I feel there could be some good bro hawk or at least, or, or in this case like a good bro fist bump. And yeah. That's pretty much it for Arthur. Again, nothing much. It's just, it's a very good moment where he shows his determination and, you know, all those types of stuff. And the final moments where he calls him a hero, when he's like, Hey, I completed, I became Night King, so how long can I be sleeping there and be the devil for? Now be a hero. So, yeah, pretty good moment. Now, on to the... I guess who this fight really was about, and that is... Dragon. So yeah, Dragon, he in this fight is bad the fucking ass. Like he straight up shows us how fucking powerful he is, how fucking badass he is. And at a time when most villains get taken out rather easily, look at you Black Clover. Don't fuck with Magicola the same way you did with the others. This arc, this fucking arc so far. Anyways, back to the Fire Force. Don't want to get pissed off again with that. Yeah, we definitely see how powerful Dragon is, and we see how, you know, and we find, and it's not just the power, we also find out more about Dragon himself. Now, we find out that Dragon is a pretty old dude. I believe it's said in one chapter in his flashback that in 200 years there will be a apocalypse, meaning that Dragon may be around 200 and something. I, maybe I'm misinterpreting, but I'm pretty sure that's the general idea we are supposed to be getting of him, Dragon. Like he's in 200s. I'm sure the volume release will clarify what his age is. I wouldn't be surprised if it's something 200 though. But yeah, in this fight, we also get his flashback. And in this flashback, we see that from birth when he was a child, he was already a freak of monster. Like, he went and started... And destroyed everything. Like he was a true calamity. And that's what everyone was talking about him. And everything. Like he from childhood to adulthood. He was completely wrecking everyone. Until one fateful day when Fieri. Shown up and basically offered him a deal. A deal where he can join. Where he joins Fight Clan. He will bring the end of his despair. Because one thing we find out. Is the fact that Dragon's Despair itself is so powerful that it can end the world. Like, it literally is fuel for the world. Like, it, Dr Dragon's Despair itself is literally destroying the world. Because when he was, for his entire life, everything was weak to him. Nothing, there was nothing there. Every time he had fight someone, it was a one-sided slaughter. So he had nothing. He couldn't fear death and, hell, before... Off, he reminded himself of Alpha, you just been drifting in space. So, yeah. Dragon himself is... We've, so, yeah, Dragon is pretty much despairy and kind of longs for that. Because there's nothing for him to live, but there's no way to kill him. So, he he just goes along with it. Basically, even... Ne so, he never actually felt any joy or anything. He always just despaired. And destroyed everything. So. Now. One problem I do, do have with him during this fight. Is how he quick. Mo how his dialogue is more or less just. Oh entertain. Oh are you going to be able to satisfy my despair? Oh no you failed me. You will not satisfy my despair. Over like every moment. No. I usually do not have a problem with psycho characters. Who are just. Who repeat basically one of the same dialogue. Multiple times. The only problem is when they do it for multiple chapters in a row, and that's more or less the only dialogue you get for those multiple chapters in a row. So, so at the end of was a bit annoying where he, Dragon said, "Oh, now you're going. Oh, now I'm sp get back to being disappointed. Oh, you fall to the ground because you can't breathe. What a wimp! I'm leaving. How, how disappointing." Dude, he he just got some effect. He might have some kind of trick. At least wait a little minute. Oh, like at least wait a minute, or something. But 
at the end of the day, it's okay. It's probably the length, the volume format, the cha or the chapter format. Probably not. It's probably gonna be bad. No, actually no. I read the two times through, and both times got started annoying at the end of it. But yeah, anyways, it's personal preference. I'm sure that other people will have it. Like let's be. I mean, again, it's probably just the fact it's together. It's probably nothing else. But yeah, it, the fight. Now let's talk more quickly his transformation, which I honestly am was kind of disappointed with it initially because I thought it was going to uh, his transformation if he's going to have one would be one a little bit more dragon like because the one that he has right now looks a little too much like Iron Man. In fact, there's a point in the fight when they are in space where he the way his helmet worked was pretty much like how Iron Man's helmet worked. So that was a little weird, and it kind of feel kind of disapp- you know, with necessary transformation, like I was thinking it would be like something over the top dragon-like. Like it would make him look like a real dragon. Um, like a- Like maybe you have like actual wings, like an actual dragon-like mouth, or have like a very strong dragon, not this kind of weird robotic type of thing. But hell, what can you really do? I guess maybe originally it was planned, but then you know, who decided to go with a different design, or maybe maybe it was something because of the way how it's gonna be drawn. Or who decided to go with a more simpler design because design is a lot more simpler. And hell, maybe it's also the color in the in the manga format. Maybe it will look better in the anime when it come when it comes to color. Like maybe it's gonna be like in the manga, it's just a standard black color, but in the anime, it might be like this very cool. That dark green or something. I don't know. But yeah. That's more or less all for the characters. And the chapters. I'm trying to think if I'm forgetting anything before. Um, well. I guess they more or less can. Well I guess I should also mention. That this fight more or less confirms. Or maybe. I want to say that it was there beforehand, but I think this fight more or less confirms that the the spear and the ambitions of people like Dragon or, or Vulcan or, you know, the main cast, like the main villains and those, their opinions are the ones that truly matter at the end of the day. Well, not, not, not like that. I'm not, I'm not a political. I mean... Their dreams, their hope, well, their hope and despair are the ones that truly like matter in the context of their world. Like, if Dragon despairs, it's gonna be greater than a hundred or so humans in Tokyo who did, who hope. That's what it's basically supposed to be taken as. Now, I'm not sure if this was said beforehand, but in this couple of chapters, we pretty much get all this confirmed. We, I believe, get said this three or two times in the. In these, in spite of these ten chapters, another thing that I feel like could have been cut, especially if it was before addressed beforehand, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Now let's go. Now let's go into the other characters who were doing stuff because there have been a lot of drop because more than the other on the second half of the somewhere between I somewhere in between the fight we got away from it and tr focus on something else. Which was probably Okubo's uh, one thing I saw this fight doesn't start to get uh, extremely draggy, which let's be real, the fight will have been dragged anyways. But probably just so it would not be too obvious. So we cut away from them and focus on some other stuff. The important things to take a note of, one, it was just, well, there was that Company 8, which just confirmed everything and their union between Lisa and you. Still no error though, which I will go into. We are going to try to predict what's gonna happen next, but needless to say, we don't see error at all in these. Like, we see a bunch of other characters, like we see Lisa. I believe we see everyone at the 8th at, outside of Iris and Shinra, which makes sense. And we also see Ugin even. And we, and yeah, we basically just get confirmation of some things that we already knew, but that's it. It, well, about the whole hope and despair thing. 
then in the ne and Link explains it to Vulcan. So I'm guessing this means that Vulcan might end up doing something that will end up benefiting it. I don't know. Maybe he'll like, maybe he'll imagine or hope to invent something that will like bring the power back, so Amaterasu would no longer be required. Because that's probably would also because you know, uh, because the thing about us humans is the fact if there is no electricity. Then our despair truly starts. So I could imagine something like that happening. Then out, then we also cut to, uh, back to Asakusa. We finally get to see what's going on there, and then we find out that due to the way how people in Asakusa think, they actually did not have that many that many problems with Infernal, with doppelgangers and Infernals and all that. Like I believe the the. From the start of it, it's not like they had a handful of them, but nothing they couldn't like easily upper hand or like I think they I think one of the guys said they are lucky but uh Connor basically tells them we no we are getting we're getting soon something bad is gonna happen soon. And what's going to happen bad? Well, simple. Betty Mouse Doppelganger is going to come to town. No, it's not confirmed, like, we don't have, like, a, like, a burst of energy, and I mean, like, that's Benny Mao's doppelganger. No, it's basically, like, they expect him to appear. And Benny Mao, and consider the fact that this was hinted at before, when Benny Mao fought his teacher, and not, and it's dead. Now, it's very likely that there is gonna be a doppelganger Benny Mao versus Benny Mao. And if you think it's gonna be trippy having to fight, having to talk about Bay Maru versus Doppelgang Bay Maru, oh, uh, well, guess guess what? They make fun of that this fact in the in the chapters itself. So they wanted that random guys who is or the, the every with Connor and Bay Maru says, oh, this is so confusing, like. If Baymaru wins, that's good because Baymaru wins, but Doppelganger is also ba Baymaru's Doppelganger, so... But if Baymaru loses, that will be bad, but it also be good because dop it means Doppelganger Baymaru lost. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna be the thing, and... You know, considering what Arthur and Dragon did, I am curious on how Baymaru versus Baymaru is gonna go. Since, you know... Although it's a bit debatable at this point if Benny Mao is the strongest because again, Dragon and Arthur literally fought in space and Arthur had a, such a violent slash that it looked like it cut, went through the entire fucking planet. So I'm a bit curious on how exactly this is gonna go, but we'll see in due time. All we can expect is Benny Mao versus Benny Mao, bitch! So yeah. Then the next thing I should probably mention before we go into tr predictions. Well, well, I guess we should also mention the fact that Fieri is shown reacting to, to Dragon's loss, and he's like, "Impossible," which makes you, which get ready for more Fieri, everyone. I'm sure we are all. Well, actually, Fieri might mean Arrow showing up, but that's more of a prediction for the next couple of things. What's gonna happen in the story? But we'll get into it later. So anyways, the final thing I should mention is the fact we also see Arthur's family, which seems to have gotten a, a little child, a new baby, after, um, since they left Arthur again. Yep, that's right, we see ba Arthur's dad, her his mom, his little siblings, and apparently a fourth one. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure there wasn't a baby being held in the hand of anyone. I'm pretty sure it was just those three. Which either means that nine months has passed? I mean, I, well, actually, they left somewhere where, um, I know, wait, was I saying how much, I, I know there was a time gap between, uh, Arthur getting the Excalibur and... The whole and this point, but was it still was nine months? Although she could be, other mother could have been early in the labor, so maybe the child does look kind of new. I don't know. Babies with hair in anime are so weird. They're either going to be just born and then they're only gonna have hair, or they're gonna be at least a couple months. I'm not sure. Anyways, we see them and they are pretty much just 
reacting to uh, our first battle and not even that much. Our father's just like, well, that prophecy I've seen, it was actually my boy off of this battle. Crazy. Worst parents of the year, everyone. Wait. Is there a worst parent in them? I'm trying to remember. Nah, probably not. I don't care. Now, anyways, with these, what actually happened? No, anyways, let's get the quick description. The such thing is, these chapters, con itself, pretty good to... Ama amazing to pretty good with the maybe the fight itself probably dragging a little too long for everyone's taste or at the very least for week to week to week prospect now with that said let's get into the, what could happen in the story next now now the thing is after fall, be, falling being in space with his Excalibur falling Makes me think that Shinya will go and save him. It's an ob obvious choice, and I can totally see it. I'm not sure if Shinya will be able to like make be a brief in space, but he might. It might be he'll get a small little feedback. He might go into Company Eight and try to reassure because, although Arthur did wake him from his sleep or whatever. It's very likely that he will try. The people will probably will still be to be a devil, and we again might see him fighting his doppelganger. We don't. I'm not sure. I can see this happening, but who knows? No, which he also awakening. There's also the fact that Iris is there, so he might go and save her as well as the rest, or, or the very least, Amaterasu and his brother Shou. All of them are in their general area, so the first people he was gonna see are probably like, like the first one he take a note off about uh, Iris and Shu with Nataku Inka. I'm not sure where Hamea is because there's this weird panel where we see Hamea uh, with Evangelist, so she may not be there, but we know Sumeria is there. If I'm not a fake, but I don't believe we even see the rest of them also, Sumeria and. And Shinra, but I'm guessing they're all in their general facility. So he might go and try to save them, or the very, or maybe he's gonna try to save them, but isn't going to be able to until Arthur catches his eye, line of sight. That's what, and then he'll probably go uh, save her and reunite with everyone. And then I'm guessing he's gonna have to find a way to convince people no, do not, no, I wasn't, that was just a fake, it was nothing. So and that, that will lead to either him with finding uh, Burns' doppelganger with Joker or find his own doppelganger. How that will go, who knows. I can honestly see Shinra beating his doppelganger in some kind of epic hero-like fashion. But that's pretty much it. Now, let's talk about the specialist Cataclysm Force. The thing is, they have been in the story for some time now, but they haven't really done much. In fact, in fact, Fear is the only one we actually know, even though I believe there are six or seven members there. So what are they gonna do now? Now, although Dragon's Despair stopped, this means they're gonna have to focus on getting despair from people who are are not as Im important as Dragon, but still need will that despair will lead. Their despair will lead to it. So everyone who currently is not feeling despair, they'll probably attack and try to bring back their despair. Which means you're probably gonna get the, the special characters and force battles very soon. How that, that will go? Well, considering the connection between Shu, I'm guessing Fieri and Arrow are gonna fight one another. Maybe Shu, when he breaks free, is gonna come again. As I could imagine, like Fieri beating Arrow down to a bloody pulp, and then Shu being broken free either by Arrow or by Shu Inra or someone jumping in and saving it and saving her. I can even imagine Shinra showing up in general just saving her life. I don't know. It's kind of big to tell because she doesn't know Arrow is their ally right now. Though know, it's again questionable. Where is she? Seriously. Even as she's changing clothes to something more special fire force attire, so she will not, you know, get confusion or something. Where the fuck is she? But, yeah. Anyways, 
Also, Ham, it's hard to tell for the rest. I'm guessing that Layer 1's gonna fight Company 1 to find out what the heck is up with that. I can see, um, I can see one of them being used to, like, redeem Ugon because he wasn't able to beat Chawan. I can even see one of them, well, no, I feel, I would say one of them, one of those weird ones might actually fight Hibana, but I feel like her grudge is more against Sumeria. But, anyways, it's just going based on battles at this point. And it's like, Baymar versus his doppelganger. It's gonna be a battle, and we don't know when it's gonna happen, when he's gonna show up. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Burns, Baymaru, and Shino's doppelgangers are all gonna pop out at the same time, similar to how the captain, the former captain of Company 4 and Raka will pop, both popped out at the same time. So I can imagine something like that happening. And yeah. And I also feel like Conro, that. Conro? Conro? Chrono, I believe. Uh, Chrono, yeah. Will show up and probably fight against Bay Morrow since that was also kind of hinted at. Well, their battle. So, we'll see what's going to happen. Now, anyways, I hope you liked this video. I hope you, you leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future. And with that said, I cannot wait to see all people next time. Bye.